I love NeoPixels and I think they are a real invention. And they are dirt cheap. But you have to pay attention if you plan to use them. Let's see YouTubers, here is the guy with a Swiss accent, with a new episode and fresh ideas around sensors and microcontrollers. In the early days, wiring LEDs was a nightmare, at least if you wanted to have many of them, or if you wanted to have different colors. Then came the WS2812, also called NeoPixels. They contain three colored diodes plus a chip. They are a huge advantage compared to the old LEDs because they work directly at 5 volts. Normal LEDs need a current limiting resistor. They can glow in many different colors. We can select 256 intensity levels for each color. Old RGB LEDs connected to a digital pin only have two, on and off. The data pin of the MCU only has to source one microampere. Normal LEDs consume many milliampere and easily can overload the output pin of a modern MCU. And the best, you can daisy chain them and only need one single data pin for hundreds of LEDs. Can you imagine the wiring we would have required in the past if we just wanted 100 pixels in three colors? A nightmare. This is why I think these WS2812 and its derivates like the SK6812 or the slightly different APA102 are a real innovation. And because of our business-minded Chinese suppliers, you get them in every imaginable form and shape. Let's start with a simple strip. Here is the first tip or trick. You can buy very similar looking strips with only white LEDs. You easily can distinguish the two. The white LEDs have no black point inside the case and the strips just have two wires instead of the NeoPixel strips which have three wires. The third one is the data wire. In reality, NeoPixels have a fourth pin, data out, which is already connected to the next pixel on the strip. You find the last D out wire at the end of such a strip. It could be attached to the next one. So VCC and ground are connected to all chips and D out of one pixel is connected to D in of the following. Tip or trick two. Never try to connect VCC to your Arduino or ESP 5 volt pin. The current consumption is high and your USB hub is not able to supply this current. Connect VCC to your lab power supply or another 5 volt charger with sufficient power. Later we will do some current measurements. Tip or trick 3. Connect ground of the NeoPixels also to your MCU, otherwise it will not work. Now we are ready to power the strip. Because NeoPixels need a data signal, we need a sketch and better a library. For strips, you can either use Adafruit's NeoPixel or the fast LED library. If we run the example sketch of the Adafruit library, the strip works and looks nice. The only two things I had to insert into the sketch was the output pin and the number of pixels. I choose 64 pixels because we later will use this 8x8 panel for a small project. Now I use another sketch and connect the matrix and the strip in parallel. Now we see that the pixels on the panel are connected like the ones on the strip, just folded. Some panels use another folding technique called zigzag. What about connecting the two to an ESP32? A complete mess. We even get ghost pixels, which are at completely different places, on the strip and on the panel. No way! For the ESP32, we have to use another library. If I connect the strip to an Arduino Uno with the same sketch, there are no different colored artifacts. But what happens here? The timing of the WS2812 has to be very precise. And there are a few versions of the same looking pixels in the market. Often you do not see which one is which. Tip or trick 4. 
Pay attention which combination of MCU, library and pixels manufacturer you use. It might need some experimentation to get it right. Luckily, we can go on with our ESP8266 because it works on the panel. And we will need Wi-Fi for our project. Tip or trick 5. Even if the datasheet says it should not work, my pixels work with 3.3 volts on the D-in pin. When we power the strip and the panel without any data, we see a big difference. The pixels on the strip are off and the pixels on the matrix are on. Later, this will create big problems. With this knowledge, we are ready to start the project. My new subscriber counter. Because I passed the 100,000 subscribers and the old counter only has five digits, I need a new one. I will use those relatively new 8x8 pixel PCBs tested before. They can easily be combined because they fit perfectly together. You can extend them in both directions. This is why I bought a set of 10 matrices and I will use 6 of them for the project. 6 digits will last for a long time. I only have to stick them to an aluminum bar and my display is ready. Because it is too big to print a box on my Prusa, I decided to mount a basis angle profile to the bottom and mount all needed electronics to the back. No box needed. I like this minimalistic style. Each tile has two connectors, input and output. The three input pins are ground, VCC and D-in. The three output pins are ground, VCC and D-out. Because the ground and VCC pins are internally connected, we only have to wire ground or VCC to one pin. And we have to wire D out of one matrix to D in of the next one. Now we need some software to get the numbers from YouTube to the display. We will use the NeoPixel library from before, but we need more. We not only want to get random patterns, we also need numbers or letters on the screen. This is not easy and requires a lot of tinkering. Fortunately, again, I can stand on the shoulders of others and use the GFX and the Neo Matrix libraries. We even get some example files to start. But now comes the next problem. How to arrange and connect the six tiles? Reading the fucking manual and scratching the head showed the results. We have to find the first pixel on the matrix and tell the sketch where it is. I decided to attach the tiles that the silk screen is readable from the front. Then the first pixel is bottom and right. Our sketch from before confirms this. I could have mounted the matrix in all other directions. Then the first pixel had to be adjusted. Tip or trick number six. It does not matter how you orient your panels. Just orient all the same. Find the first pixel on the tile and adjust the parameters in the sketch accordingly. I suggest to use the silk screen on the back of the PCB for alignment. Then your first pin is top left and the connectors are also placed better. Next we have to check how the pixels are connected on the tile. In rows or columns. Our example file shows that they are wired in rows and we adjust the parameters accordingly. Of course, if I would turn the tile by 90 degrees, we would have to choose column here. The next question is how to connect the tiles. For a horizontal display, we have two possibilities, from left to right and vice versa. Tip or trick number seven. The library assumes you connect your matrices from left to right. So we have to wire the most left D-in pin to the ESP8266 or the Arduino. Then it's D out to the D in of the next and so on. In the end, all tiles are connected from left to right. Of course, seen from the front. As you see, I used wire wrapping for that purpose. And I was happy about that decision because I had to remove some of the wires because I made mistakes during the process. Of course, I had nobody telling me the tricks before I started. That was the reason for the head scratching. Tip or trick number eight. Use a tiny tip on your soldering iron to solder the pins. 
because you have to do that on the front side, the chance to harm NeoPixels is big. The decision to use an ESP8266 was already made before. For such projects, I prefer a VMOS D1 Mini because it is very compact. The first tests show that everything works, but one part of the display is not used for my six digits. Why is that? Tip or trick number nine. It is shorter than you think. The font used by the Adafruit library is only 6x8, not 8x8 as the one used in my last counter, which means that I just could have changed the font of my old counter. You see how software sometimes can replace hardware, or in my case, could replace, if the engineer is bright enough to find it out before he builds a new hardware. Anyway, I have it now. It looks better than the old one and represents the new area in my YouTuber life. In the new free space on the display, I added an up or down arrow and a bar graph which shows me the difference of subscribers from yesterday. A red down arrow will be the announcement that this channel should be closed. But so far it is still green. I forgot to mention something disagreeable. We already discovered before that if we do not supply any data to the WS2812 chips on the panel, they switch to full white after powering up, with a devastating effect, a huge current draw. I started with a 5 volt 1 ampere power supply I used for my old counter, and the ESP always crashed because it did not get enough voltage to power up and switch the LEDs off. With switched off pixels, the one ampere of this power supply would have been more than enough. A typical catch 22. If I use this 8 ampere power supply, the current draw is more than 5 ampere. On the oscilloscope we see that as soon as the matrix gets data, the pixels are switched off, the current is reduced and the voltage jumps up to the 5 volts. After some tests, I found that this 3 ampere power supply is sufficient to start the ESP8266. Tip or trick number 10. To overcome this catch-22 situation, use a big power supply and make sure your first command in your sketch switches all pixels off. Otherwise, your display will be blocked and something gets really hot and maybe it even catches fire. When all pixels are on, we see that the 30 AWG wires used for wire wrapping are overloaded. The power enters on the left side and the panels get less and less voltage to the right. Tip or trick 11. Connect power in the middle of the panel, not at the end. Now the intensity distribution is even across the panel. But pay attention, now the current goes up to the full 8 ampere of the power supply which is still not the possible maximum. I measured the current draw of a single matrix. It is 1.5 ampere, which sums up to 9 ampere for 6 tiles if your power supply is capable of sourcing this amount. In normal operation, most of the pixels are off. Used as a counter, the whole display consumes less than 1 ampere. If you want to work with smaller currents and a smaller power supply, you can add a P-channel power FET between the power supply and the display. Its gate is connected to one of the ESP8266 pins. If we configure this pin as an input, the pull-up resistor makes sure that the FET is off and the display does not get any power. As soon as we configure the pin as output and set it to low, the FET switches the display on. Now we can send a short signal to dim the display and it stops to draw a high current. Now it also works with the 1 ampere power supply from before. It was not easy to get the timing right. The display of course only starts to listen to commands if it's powered. So you still see a short moment where all LEDs are on. This is the time needed to send the off command. But because this time is very short, the ESP does not crash. So finally we came to tip or trick number 12. Insert a P-channel FET into the VCC wire to switch the display off at startup. Like that you can avoid using a too big power supply. Of course I wanted to add some bells and whistles. 
a light-dependent resistor which measures the luminosity of the room. Like that, the ESP can adapt the brightness of the display. This saves quite some current, because if I am not in the lab, the display is off. And I added a small loudspeaker which announces each new subscriber. Unfortunately, it also announces if I lost one. Now I only have to replace my old display with a new one. Who knows how long this one will last? Will it be defective before it reaches the 999,000? Or will I be defective before? Or will you stop watching this guy with a Swiss accent? Who knows? Summarized. WS2812 NeoPixels are great because they reduce the parts count, the number of pins and the current on your MCU. We get NeoPixels arranged in all forms and shapes. In the end, all these arrangements are a string of pixels. In the case of panels, the software has to know the pattern and switch the right pixels on or off. The current draw can be quite high. Never connect VCC of the pixels to the Arduino or ESP5 volt pin. Otherwise it is possible that your MCU will crash. But still connect ground of the WS2812 to ground of your MCU. Because the timing is very critical, some combinations of MCU, library and NeoPixels do not work correctly. You have to try to find the right combination. If you use matrices, you have to find the first pixel and adjust the sketch accordingly. Then connect the tiles from left to right. If you saw the pins on the panels, use a very thin tip or you will hurt pixels. The library font is only 6 pixels wide. You can place more than one character on one 8x8 matrix. Some panels are on at startup and draw an extremely high current. Without precaution, your MCU will crash and your power supply might overheat or catch fire. You have two possibilities to solve this issue. Use a potent power supply and switch the pixels off right at the start of your sketch or add a power FET to switch the panel off during startup. To reduce voltage drop, always connect power to the middle of the display, not to the end. One last thing. Of course, I use IoT App Story for my counter. Like that, I can update my sketch over the air or change Wi-Fi passwords with my smartphone if needed. I hope this video was useful or at least interesting for you. If true, please consider supporting the channel to secure its future existence. You find the links in the description. Thank you. Bye.